Hi, and welcome to this introductory video on risk management. Anytime someone is on the water in a canoe, kayak, raft, or tube, there are inherent risks involved. Although you have no legal duty to eliminate the inherent risks of paddling, paddle sport business owners, managers, and staff have a responsibility to reasonably manage those risks and not enlarge them. This video is a short lesson on risk management for paddle sport professionals, including businesses that rent, outfit, or guide canoes, kayaks, rafts, and tubes, and retail businesses that provide on-water demonstration of consumer products. It includes some definition of common terms in our industry and some practical tips for you. First, let's start with some definitions. Throughout this video, you'll hear terms that are used to describe the activities we undertake in order to reduce risk to our guests. We would like to give you a brief overview of these terms. What is risk management? As you know, our primary business goal is to provide an enjoyable experience for our guests. We recognize, however, that emergency situations and injuries can occur anytime someone is on the water. A key part of your job, therefore, is to reduce those occurrences. Risk management is the term used to define the activities we take to reduce the risk to guests, employees, the business, and the public. In general, risk management activities include everything from operating in manageable weather and water conditions to providing customers with equipment in good working condition. In particular, though, risk management requires us to provide guests with appropriate information and instruction. Simply put, risk management is our effort to prevent serious injury and death and to reduce the frequency and seriousness of other incidents. When we talk about loss prevention, we're talking about our activities to reduce the impact on our business and each of us personally in the effect of an accident or incident. Loss prevention efforts include offering quality programming, purchasing appropriate insurance coverage for our business, effectively managing any incidents or accidents, using appropriate releases and waivers, and securing legal counsel when necessary. Finally, what is standard of care? Simply put, it's the standard by which our duty to our guests will be measured. The standard is to act as a reasonable paddle sports professional would act in the same or similar circumstances. It's important to understand these terms because they form the basis for the policies and practices of our business. They guide our daily decisions and help us provide an enjoyable recreation experience for our guests. As employees of this business, it's your responsibility to understand these concepts and how your decisions and actions can impact our guests' enjoyment. It is important to recognize that there can be significant consequences if we don't do our jobs well. There are risks that are inherent to paddle sports, that is, they simply come with the territory, and without them, the sport takes on a very different character. The risk of drowning, though very low, is a reality any time someone is on the water. Canoes and kayaks can capsize when paddled incorrectly, leaving guests in the water. Paddling into common hazards such as rocks, low-hanging branches, or strainers can also cause a canoe or kayak to capsize. Paddlers can also be thrown from the rafts, even in moderate whitewater. Although we don't want these things to happen, the likelihood is they will at some point. In order to reduce the chances of these occurrences, and thus reduce the likelihood of injuries to our guests, we need to educate, provide proper equipment, and reduce the chances that our guests will encounter dangerous situations. We won't be able to eliminate all dangerous situations, but we can help our guests understand how to act if they find themselves in one. We are all aware of the litigious nature of our society. Paddle sport businesses can be sued for damages when an accident or injury happens. The likelihood of winning a suit is improved, however, if we are conscientious, use well-maintained equipment, properly train our staff and guides, provide our guests with information on how to paddle smart, and inform them of potential hazards. When someone participates in paddle sports, they assume certain risks of the activity, including, in most states, inherent risks, even if the paddler does not specifically know them. A participant should understand that there's a chance that they can be hurt or can die on the water, and they need to take this information into consideration before they go on a trip. Now I'd like to share some practical tips for risk management that you should be aware of. As renters and outfitters, our preferred practice is to inform our guests of risks inherent to paddle sports. We try to inform our guests in many ways. An operator who uses a video, posters, signs, informative participant agreements, and the American Canoe Association's Smart Start program is reaching guests by using a variety of learning styles. 
This Paddle Sports Pro is not likely to wind up in court due to what lawyers call failure to inform. More importantly, though, the guests will have multiple opportunities to learn about the risks of paddling along with opportunities to ask questions. By educating and informing paddlers, we help them make better decisions while they're on the water. One of the most important steps we take is requiring each guest to read and sign a participant agreement that includes a description of the risks of paddling. By signing the agreement, our guests acknowledge and expressly assume those risks. The effectiveness of these documents and their requirements vary from state to state. As with all such legal matters discussed in this video, consult with an attorney familiar with the laws applied to your operation. It's important to realize that even though these efforts will help guests understand some of the hazards and techniques they need to know, it can't replace what you do when you put them on the water. Your pre-trip briefing is very important. You should describe any inherent risks of paddling and answer any questions asked of you by your guests. Although we can't provide information about every scenario your guest will encounter, we can describe the common situations. Whether you use a briefing developed by your supervisor or use the American Canoe Association's Smart Start for Paddlers briefing, your role in informing guests is very important. Providing proper equipment to guests is an important part of enabling them to paddle smart. The likelihood of having an accident or incident can be greatly reduced by providing the proper equipment. We must ensure that each guest has a life jacket along with a boat and paddle that is properly maintained and in good condition. It is part of your role at this business to help ensure equipment is in good condition. Boats should be regularly inspected for wear and damage and pulled out of use when repairs are needed. Simple problems with boats, including loose screws, should be given as much attention as readily apparent problems such as holes or broken seats. I can't emphasize enough how important a Piper life jacket fit is to our customers. It is your responsibility to make sure that every guest is provided with a properly fit life jacket in good condition. To ensure a life jacket is fitted properly, first make sure the guest is provided a jacket appropriately sized according to the fit information on the inside of the jacket. Next, make sure the customer puts on the life jacket and fastens the buckles and zippers. Then check the appropriate fit. To ensure it is fitted correctly, ask the guest to raise their arms, then pull on the shoulders of the jacket. If it rises up, it needs to be tightened, or perhaps you may need another size. In particular, please make sure children are fitted with the correct size jackets and that larger guests receive a life jacket that is big enough for them. Your supervisor can answer any questions about appropriately sizing a life jacket for different guests. If a life jacket is no longer in good condition, it should be taken out of service. Stains and fading are common but do not impact the function of a life jacket. Tears, holes, and missing straps or buckles can affect a life jacket's function and should be removed from service as soon as they are noticed. If you have any questions about a particular life jacket's continued use, ask your supervisor. Finally, paddles should also be in good condition. Small chips from the blade generally will not affect a paddle's function, but anything much larger than a dime should probably come out of service. If a grip is missing from a handle, don't use it. Although we have videos and other information available to show people how to paddle smart, your ability to provide easy to understand information about how to paddle is important. Paddling instruction does not need to be complicated. The basic strokes can be taught to casual paddlers in just a few minutes. You should take the time to learn the basic strokes to be comfortable communicating that information to your guests. Here are the key points you need to provide about paddling a kayak. Position your hand evenly along the paddle shaft at least shoulder width apart. Keep the blade close to the boat to track in a straight line. Take a stroke by reaching forward with one arm and placing the paddle blade in the water as far forward as comfortable. Lift the paddle out of the water as it reaches your hip. Alternate taking paddle strokes on each side to go straight. Try and rotate your body to move the paddle through the water rather than pulling with your arms. Not only will it be less tiring, you'll get a better full body workout. To turn, sweep the paddle through the water in an arc away from the boat. Back paddle to stop. If two people share a tandem kayak, they should paddle on the same side at the same time. The key points you need to provide about paddling a canoe are also relatively simple. Position your hand so that the hand on the side of the boat you're paddling on is positioned down the shaft and your other hand is on top of the grip. Take a stroke by reaching forward and keeping your paddle blade close to the side of the boat to track in the straightest line. Lift the paddle out of the water as it reaches your hip. Canoes tend to veer by turning away from the solo boater's paddle or away from the rear paddle in a tandem canoe. 
Switching sides every few strokes can fix this veering. In most boats, five or ten strokes per side is about right. The person in back can also trail the paddle behind them with the blade on edge. Push the paddle away from the canoe or pull it in toward the boat to make corrections or to steer. Another way to turn easily is to sweep the paddle through the water in an arc away from the boat. To stop a canoe, paddle backwards. When paddling in tandem, canoeists should always paddle on opposite sides and time their strokes together. Lots of communication will allow paddlers to work together to go straight, turn, or stop. The key points about paddling a raft are much like paddling a canoe. Position your hand so that the hand on the side of the boat you're paddling on is positioned down the shaft and your other hand is on top of the grip. Take a stroke by reaching forward and keeping your paddle blade close to the side of the boat to track in the straightest line. Lift the paddle out of the water as it reaches your hip. Rafts are more difficult to turn than a canoe, and your guide or the paddler at the back of the raft will help steer from the back of the boat, often by using his or her paddle as a rudder. If you're sitting side by side, one person can paddle forward while the other paddles back to turn. These practical tips are just the beginning of your training. Your supervisor should provide you with detailed information on emergency response plans, the pre-trip briefing, driving procedures, and any other information he or she deems important to ensuring your guests have an enjoyable time on the river. We hope this information helps you understand the nature of the work you do here and why your training is so important to your employer. With careful thought and attention, you can help make everyone's trip enjoyable. Thank you for watching and listening.